Hi all and welcome to the channel. Today we will be looking at one of the harder things to achieve for off-grid life, producing your own gasoline, diesel and fuel oil. Basically the holy grail for off-grid life. Biogas as fuel and energy source is interesting in that regard as well, but it comes with complex storage issues. Biogas also requires a long time for the bacteria to produce the methane in reasonable amounts. Liquid fuel, however, is more easy to store, transport and handle. Plus, it can be produced in batches and does not need a constant running project like biogas. We will be looking at designing a plastic to fuel pyrolysis reactor. What this device does, it breaks up plastics and turns them into gas. That gets collected and cooled condenses into its chemical compounds which we extract as pyrolysis oil. In a simple cooling process you gather all components in a single extract. Depending on your plant usage further distillation is needed to split it up into oil, diesel, gasoline. However, it should be possible to split the components with a more complex cooling process and produce oil, diesel and gasoline in a single run without needing further distillation. At least, that is the plan what we're aiming for. This technology is rather new and not commonly available. There is industrial solutions, but generally speaking they are massive in size and upwards of 120,000 euros. By design they are made to be fed by recycling plants. We will be looking at something more home sized and affordable. From my research so far I found two main approaches. I will be showing you guys some outtakes of their videos. If you want to watch their whole video I'll post the link in the description. First is the over engineering approach. Make it a lab experiment costing about 5000 euros, requires tons of sensors, specialized equipment and a PhD in chemistry would help too. The other approach is very much ghetto style. Just munch together the cheapest parts you can find while ignoring any and all safety measures. Very likely hurting yourself or your surroundings in latest or third attempt. In this proof of concept video you can see a popular YouTuber. The poor bloke even set fire to the whole thing. This is all fun and games but for off grid life we need something reliable, robust and preferably not run on electricity. Something that can be moved and used multiple times without cables coming off, liquids leaking and the whole thing catching fire. What I envision for this is rather like the T-54 of the Soviet army. Crude, effective, reliable and you can repair it with a hammer after 4 vodkas. No electronic sensors, no cables and as little moving parts as possible. Let's have a look at the basic construction sketch. First, we will be looking at the burning chamber. What we need is an airtight chamber that conducts heat very well. Steel offers itself as perfect material for this. Under our chamber, we will have a heat source, in our case a fire. On top of the chamber will be an optional port to connect a temperature sensor. This will help to see if you need to increase or reduce heat input. The front of the chamber will be used for the filling. It needs to be closed airtight as we don't want oxygen in the chamber during the process. In the back we have a port to extract the hot gas. Now it's time to look at the complete pyrolysis reactor sketch. We will go from the left to the right. I made little numbers over each section so you can see what I'm talking about. Number one is the burning chamber that we just discussed. After extracting the gas from the hot burning chamber it needs to pass through a catalyst. This is needed to reduce the amount of toxic elements in case the plastic was not 100% clean. In step 3 the condensation through cooling happens. Here we have three cooling tubes. As cooling medium water is optimal. It's broadly available, untoxic and easy to handle. Each of the cooling tubes temperature and with that the condensation range for the gas that passes through can be adjusted by changing the cooling water temperature. 
After the third cooling tube, we only have gases like butane and octane left. This can be either burned off or rerouted to heat the burning chamber. Each of the cooling tubes has a collector mounted that is number 4 in the picture on the lower right side. First will be oil, second should be diesel and the last one gasoline. How clean each condensation is depends very much on how exactly the cooling can handle the temperature ranges. This might require some tinkering. The overall design goals of this project are a mobile yet solid and robust plastic to fuel reactor that is low on maintenance and easy for the user. Built out of internationally broadly available parts, sized for a reasonable amount of input and output and able to run independently of any electricity source. This concludes our first video on the plastic to fuel reactor project. I will of course be posting the next steps in the future on this channel. If you want to keep up to date with this project, subscribe and hit the bell. With that, wish you all a great day and make it count.